No Mai Hoki Mai. His beautiful new book, Māori Art, explores the connection between the traditional and the contemporary and the place of Māori art within an international context. Welcome leading New Zealand curator and art historian, Dr Rangi Hirua Pānoa. Tēnā koe hoa. Tēnā koe. This book here has been 23 years, it's a huge book, but under 2 kg, <laughs> 23 years in the making. Tell us about it. Well, it's um, it's been a, a long project, um, yes. but uh, an enjoyable one. Uh, it's one that's involved uh, the two photographers, Mark Adams and Haruhi Kuo Samishima, and published by Batemans. So. Yeah. Uh, why was it so important for you to do this book? As I mentioned in my introduction, you're talking about the, you know, uh, the difference between traditional and the contemporary. Mm. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, the, the book deals with the, the metaphor, uh, kōrero whakarite, um, that involves the awa, the river, right. and the, the whole central uh, symbol of the, the book is the, the way that the river flows between the traditional uh, matapuna or wellspring of the culture and the wahapu, the, the harbour mouth. Right. Um, so a, a part of the river that's open to international currents and influence, things that come across the threshold of the horizon. And the importance of the book is looking, I think, at the idea of Māori art is positioned not wholly in one area or the other, that is in the traditional, so-called traditional, right. or the contemporary, but really the ebb and flow of both of those currents, and uh, that's the, the kaupapa. The, so, the so, for example, let's talk about traditional, uh, I would say Māori carving, for example. Uh, you have a section in there which covers, you know, master carvers like Pene Taiapa, mm. and how has that influenced contemporary art today? Well, it's, it's like the metaphor of the river, it flows into it and it, it's a very natural thing, you sure. know. So, uh, you know, um, those artists also weren't immune to international influence, so the, the book also uh, looks at the influence of the world. Sure. You know, and, yeah. You've, it's beautifully illustrated, 250 artworks, landscapes, meeting houses and many never be before published images. How did you go about deciding which works will feature in this book? Oh, well, there wasn't any premeditated... Uh, plan there. Um, we, you, uh, books are uh, largely a cooperation uh, between a, an author and institutions, you know, that want to support it or sponsors that, that want to uh, put their resor resources into it or, and also photographers. So it's quite a complex uh, balance, you know, between all those stakeholders. Yeah. And what you end up with is really the, the way that the, the river meanders, I, I suppose. You, you work with the path of least resistance. Sure. Now, you feature the work of some well-known Māori artists, but there are also a couple of unknown kind of tucked away in the, in the river bends, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and, and as a, a society, we, we shouldn't really... Well, I'm not a great believer in the, the pantheon of, uh, of Māori art or any type of art form that... Uh, privileges just a couple of people up the top right. of the pyramid, you know, postmodern or, or modern artists, the artists maybe we send to Venice or, or um, put large amounts of money into for exhibitions. So it's a very diverse uh, examination of the idea of Māori art, not yeah. just, uh, you know, a couple of important artists, but a broader, much broader spectrum. And also, um, the book looks at um, the stories embedded in the works, and not just the aesthetics. It's, mm. Why was this important for you to tell those yeah, stories? Yeah, uh, one of our, our important anthropologists, uh, Sydney Mead, uh, said that uh, language, kupu Māori, is, is what activates an artwork. It, it brings it alive. And, and so when we were going around these different marae around the country and, uh, you know, being invited into these places and sleeping in these whare and just seeing this amazing work, uh, what brought it alive were the stories of the local people. You know, they'd yeah. it all about the, the ancestors that mm -hmm. uh, were being depicted and, and it just totally gave it a whole other layer of meaning and, and purpose. So that's what a story is, a wānanga. It, it allows you to get into the deeper layer. Mm. So obviously you're hoping that this book will reach a global audience? Of course, uh, yeah. every author would hope their, their book reaches a global audience. Ultimately, that's up to the, the viewer. Uh, themselves as to how they respond to it. It, it already is being read by people uh, around the globe, but um, it needs, uh, yeah, it'd be good to um, see uh, more support in that area with a, um, uh, perhaps uh, 
uh, different editions where you know there was there was another language involved. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Rangihiro Angami Nui Kiakwe, thank you so much for joining. It's a wonderful book, beautiful book, and everyone should out, get out there and get a copy. It's like a weight training, actually. <laughs> Just under two kgs, you can do a bit of bit of uh, exercise at home. Tēnā yeah. thank you so much. All right, doc, Dr. Rangihiro Apanohu's Māori Art is out now. You can find more information over on our website. Well, still to come, celebrity chef Simon Goltz finishing off his two mouth-watering roasts and wondering how to make your wardrobe last till summer, Jackie O'Fee has ways to make it work. And of course, not forgetting your chance to win a trip to Fiji is on the way. That's right after this from Mel.